Chadwick's in Wigan is as traditional as they come. It's an old-fashioned high street butchers, where meat has been prepared the same way for decades. The kind of place the supermarkets have been putting out of business. I believe that we should produce good food to the best of our knowledge for the benefit of our customer. I pay the farmers as much as I can. I charge the customers as little as I can. And in between, I try to make as much money as I can. <laughs> but we will not sell anything that we don't think's fit. So what does John Chadwick think of the kind of meat on sale in the supermarkets? We asked him to cast an expert eye over a selection of packaged meat we bought in his local supermarkets. Uh, right, what else have we got? New season's lamb, yeah, no problems with that. In there, we've got one, two, three, four loin chops and two cut chops pretending to be loin chops. Oh, that's well out of order. Cutlets passing themselves off as loin chops. Shame on you, Asda. Whatever next. Asda told us one man's cutlet is another man's loin chop. Our loin chop packs, they said, include loin chops from the rib end, also known as cutlets. The National Federation of Meat and Food Traders disagree. Their spokesman told us a traditional loin chop should have a T-bone in it, unlike a cutlet. All right, let's move on. We've got two nice pork chops. Oh, it isn't. When I read the label, it's with added water for extra succulents. Why adulterate a natural product? What else has gone in with the water? If you read the small print, there's all sorts gone in it. Dry glucose syrup, stabilizers, and preservatives. Why? It's a natural product. It'll keep. I don't understand. And with a pack price of £2.20, you're paying 25 pence for all that water, glucose, stabilizers, and preservatives. According to Tesco, because customers now prefer grilling to frying, a brine solution is added to some pork cuts, because otherwise they would lose some succulents. We've got another one. Oh, it's a cracker, this one. We've got the natural fat there, and we've got some added fat there. That means you've got animals from more than one beast. Bad butchery. If I look at mine, all I have is natural fat. If you buy mine, you buy more meat, less fat. Uh, in price, I'm actually a little bit cheaper. About 20 pence a kilo cheaper. Tesco told us... Added fat produces a more succulent joint. We also sell joints without added fat. So the supermarkets can't always beat the traditional butcher on price. But what about taste? We decided to put a range of supermarket meat to the taste test. And here's a place where exquisite taste and top quality ingredients are very much on the menu. Raymond Blanc's award-winning Le Manoir aux Quatre Saisons. We invited a bunch of average shoppers from the Oxford area to join us there. And like most of the rest of us, they now do the bulk of their shopping in supermarkets. Tesco's and Sainsbury's, they're the local ones. As to for cheapness. I can sort of walk five minutes down my road and there's a Sainsbury's local. Today they volunteered to help us with our tasting. Sadly though, it won't be the confit of foie gras with soused cherries and spiced mango chutney. No, they're here to see if they can tell the difference between lamb and steak bought in a supermarket and the same meat bought from Raymond Blanc's favourite butcher. So what do you have for me? That one is a um, Devonshire or Devonshire, Suffolk or... Uh, yeah, Devonshire now. Oh, these lovely. Are, these are, are nice. Lovely. The texture Absolutely. on them is nice and soft. Yeah. But first, our jury of 12 are about to pass judgment on two sirloin steaks. They'll have nothing to go on but texture and taste. Yeah, that's a lot of eyes lighting up there. Mm. And to make life more difficult, they've both been cooked by the man himself. Uh, the two different types are one that's from the supermarket, and then the other one bought from the sort of traditional butchers. 
They don't know which is which, but it's the butcher's sirloin at first. Meat number one, traditional butcher's prime sirloin. I really like that, actually. Lovely smell. Really firm texture. Juicy. Very, very nice. I thought it was very juicy, which I thought was very good. Got a lot, got a lot of taste straight off. OK, great. Well, uh... And now it's the supermarket steak. Here we go. You always get to go first. You're very lucky, yeah. aren't you? Meat number two, Morrison's top quality sirloin steak. The first one was more uniform. This is a bit messy in the mouth. But it had quite a sort of buttery flavour, but it still wasn't as... Um, it wasn't as pleasing as the first one. So, first of all, who preferred sirloin steak number one? Wow, this looks like a clear-cut verdict. OK, ten. And ten. who preferred steak number two? Not looking good for Morrison's. So this looks like first blood to Monsieur Blanc. In fact, it's a 10-2 verdict in favour of the butcher's beef and against the supermarket sirloin. Thank you. Let's... Thank you. Thank you, Madam. <laughs> Thank you, team. Thank you, team. You've made him very happy. <laughs> Next, it's lamb. And this time, we'll make it just a little more difficult. Blindfolds on, everyone. Thank you very much. Very serious. They've got to do the job on taste alone. No clues from what it looks like this time. And also, just to make the point that um, in all of the stuff that we've been buying, when we've been to the supermarkets, we've bought, you know, pretty much the best stuff that they have on offer. We've not sort of gone for the economy range of things, just so that you know that. We'll start from this end. Meat number one, Sainsbury's lamb chops. OK, and uh, if we could bring in lamb chop number two. Meat number two, traditional butcher's lamb chops. And who preferred lamb chop number two? Not quite unanimous, but another comfortable victory for the traditional butcher. Well, thank you very much, everyone. We're going to take a bit of a break now, and guess what? You can have something to eat. <laughs> A food tasting with Raymond Blanc is a pleasant way to find out about supermarket food. But in part two, I come face to face with the dark side of the meat industry. This is a chicken farm in Norfolk. Birds are reared here for one of the biggest suppliers of chickens to supermarkets across the country. Behind these doors are thousands of chickens. They've almost reached the end of their life cycle when they'll be slaughtered ready for eating. The conditions you are about to see are truly horrific. This film, shot by an undercover investigator just two months ago in May, is a chilling record of the way in which some chickens are being reared. Lameness is obvious. Birds unable to lift themselves out of the ammonia-soaked litter. But in amongst them, dead and injured birds, their companions sometimes trampling on them. It's absolutely boiling in here, stoking in here. The condition of some of these birds, badly injured but still alive, is deeply distressing. Yet many of them are likely simply to be slaughtered along with the rest. They won't make grade A, the whole chickens you find on the supermarket shelves, but when it comes to chicken pieces, the requirements are less demanding. 